All right, you're the money man or woman, right? You're a small time record label owner, small time investor. You're trying to get into the music industry, but the thing is, you're probably lacking those resources that you need, right? You got the money, everything's all good. It's like, hey, I can invest in this, but I don't have resources. I also don't have the network to do what it is I need to do. Lastly, I don't even have the knowledge, right? This can bring confidence into the picture, but of course your money for some of you all covers up that confidence, that lack of confidence, and it makes you say, whatever, I'm gonna push forward through this thing. But deep down inside, you're unsure if this investment is gonna be worth the time because you got somebody's niece over here or your nephew over there and you're trying to figure out, is this really gonna be what I wanna do? Well, guess what? We're gonna uncover some of those things and we're gonna dig deep on how we're gonna make this investment possible so that you can make it big in this industry or at least make some success with it. Coming up right here on the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham, and though I might not have had $100,000 to invest, I've worked with a lot of investors who've had that much or more to invest. And I can tell you from self-experience, I built one with some borrowed capital that I built up in 12 months, maybe 18 months, but crashed it in a two year time period simply because I didn't have the resources, the network, and some opportunities to make certain things happen and a couple other things that were the factors in there. But I'm gonna show you some things that you need to work through so that you can make this investment more worth your time. Check it out. All right, record label owners. So your first step in your foundation, all right, is your mission statement. You wanna develop a mission statement that consists of three monetary goals. The reason why is that the business has to make money to pay artists, staff, if any, and yourself. You can't forget about yourself. You also want to set a deadline with this goal or these goals right here. These goals are going to determine something in my next slide, which has to do with brand. But the three monetary goals are going to give you the fire and the drive to push forward for you personally as the president of the label and all of the staff members that you bring on or the help. Because if the help knows where you're going and you know where you're going, you're not going to deter from that goal. The artist kind of has to know where you're going or what you're going to do. Now, you might not tell them how much money you're planning to make. But if they know that you're going to focus on music streams, synchronization and merch or music streams, merch and touring or music streams, online content and playlisting, which is part of music streams or synchronization, then they know, okay, this is what the label is planning to do. And this is what they're also going to plan to do for me. And you can keep to yourself. We want to make X amount of dollars in all three of those monetary goals in our first 18 months. Once we can put that together, we have a plan that everybody that we bring on board will know. And then now we can stay focused on that because then we can go into our next step, which is this building a strong foundation based on the brand of the label. Now, based on what you sign, what you sign is probably what you want the label to be branded as because most people, once you figure out how to work a certain type of music, you're going to sign somebody else in that same lane. So if you learn how to work R&B and you work it really good and you get all these connections built, you're probably going to sign another R&B act because of the network that you're going to build later down the line. And this network is going to be best suited for the type of music that you sign. When you go and you sign a rock act and you're an R&B label, well, now we got to build all new connections for the, for the rock sound. Why would you do that? And you already have these connections. So the label will be branded based on what you sign. Now, you'll want to create a brand identity for the label. Identity is made up of what you stand for, which is what you're signing. This is what you love as the president of the label. And then what you're great at doing. What you're great at doing is predicated on these monetary goals, synchronization, merchandise, and music streams, right? That's what you're going to be great at doing for those first 18 months. This is your first go at it, right? You're spending anywhere from 30 to 100K. You're a small time investor. So you're going to be great at those three things. And people are going to pay you for those things that you're great at. And then what you're giving to the world is predicated on the three goals that we talked about back here. That way we never get off. We stay on brand. All the content is and all the effort is put forth in those three categories. So now people in the marketplace know what we're doing and, and they know us for how we do business. Now, this is a B2B thing, business to business, it's not business to consumer. The marketplace I'm talking about is business to business. Businesses start to see how you move in the marketplace and they're like, oh, 
those guys are great at making music for synchronization. Even though they sign great mainstream acts, they get the records that they can use for double uses. You get what I'm saying? Then we want to build on a marketing plan in addition to our brand and then also in addition to our three monetary goals. Check it out. Look how I'm, look how I'm going to switch this now. Finally, we want to establish a marketing plan for the initial target market you want to hit. So that's the age. So if you're signing an act that is 19 that does R&B versus an act that is 36 and we're doing adult contemporary, it's different. So, okay, if our target market is from 18 to 26, cool. Our region that we're signing for, now our R&B is a little bit more universal than rap because rap, we can, you know, we can kind of compartmentalize it based on the regions of the United States or whatever this country is that we live in. We can compartmentalize rap music a little bit easier than R&B music, right? But we can do a little bit of the same. Like you have Southern R&B music, then you have the mainstream R&B music. So what region? What sound? What does the music sound like? Motown did not sound like Stax Records. Motown was refined. Stax Records was raw. You see what I'm saying? Because they were from Memphis. They were from the South. So what's the region? What's the age group we're targeting? What's the lifestyle of the listener? If we're doing R&B, is this women? You know what I mean? Are we signing a female artist to cater to women? Are we signing a female artist that men want to hear? Because there are female artists that men want to hear. But they have a type of lyric ability that makes men want to listen to them. And then, finally, here's the tricky part. What physical locations do these people show up to? People that listen to this R&B. Because we have to market in the physical as well as market digitally. If you are, uh, if you sign an R&B artist who is a, who is an advocate of wine. Well, then an upscale wine bar, like and doing things in conjunction with them and your artist would make sense. You know what I mean? To get people to do certain things in your fan base. You know what I mean? Exclusive listening parties and sessions and intimate, whatever, what, yada, yada, in a wine bar. Perfect. I mean, the ticket would be high for that, but it would match what you sign, what you care about, what you do. The age range that you sign for, the reason in which you do it. You know what I'm saying? I, and I just threw something out there. It could be whatever. You're a rapper who's a skateboard person. You would show up at, you know, sneaker stores, skate parks, whatever you're doing to show, put, to put your artist in the physical to make something happen. You want to develop a marketing plan based on those four things. Age, region, lifestyle, and physical locations. You know what I'm saying? Now we got to go into the money itself that we talked about in the beginning. I know this is getting lengthy, but just stick with me here. So you want to build a strong business model, a revenue model. You need to develop a revenue model based on where you want your record labels to receive revenue from. This goes back to the goals, music streams, physical sales, synchronization, music publishing, etc. Then you want to break down that goal into the time frame of the 18 months. And then we can move into the next 18 months, so forth and so on. And I'm saying 18 months because this is normally based on your album cycle inside of your record deal that you're going to have your artist sign. If the if you know the label is going to make the majority of its money from music streams, we're going to figure out a budget for that inside of this revenue model. And then we're going to figure out what it looks like and what we want to make from the physical sales and the synchronization and music publishing, etc. So we're taking the goals in the beginning and then we're breaking it down even more. Okay. Now we want to budget this thing. In the beginning, you won't have money, but you need to make a list of everything that you can possibly think of that your record label will need to run on a month to month basis. All right. Budget realistically, budget for everything. Once you make the list, find 12 to 18 months of funding for that budget. For the categories that we did right here, that's what we're looking for the budget for. 12 to 18 months of money to make the category run so that we can achieve our ultimate goal back here on the mission. You see how this starts to work down the line now? I know this video is a little bit lengthy, but follow me here, okay? Now we want to talk about diversifying revenue in the future because we're still in the business model. We want to diversify revenue streams if your system's running too lean, meaning if you're not flowing enough cash based on the amount of work you're putting in, then open up more pipelines because it might be that your artist makes really great sync music, but that sync music isn't good enough for people to just listen to every day. They need to watch it with an image. So we need to change up how we're doing things in our revenue model by diversifying into more synchronization options. Okay. 
Um, and then maybe because a lot of times some of you all might not even work on merchandise because in the beginning, nobody really wants to buy the merchandise until they feel like there's a cool club, a coolness around this artist. All right. Once there's a coolness surrounding the artist where it's like good to be in the know of this artist then the merchandise will start to pop off. So if the music doesn't do well or is failing to hit the economic goal, I want you to do something called cross collateralization. And I just, just want you to cross collateralize your investment. Well, I want you to pull in some money from another channel, build another channel to ultimately meet your all in financial goal of all three goals that we had in the beginning of the video. Now we got to build a strong network. Remember what I said in the beginning of the video that if you're signing R and B acts, why would you sign rock acts? Well, you want to list out your immediate needs for what you need. And this is how you're going to come to the conclusion of if you start with one identity with the label, you're probably going to keep signing more and more of the same. All right. So you want to list out your immediate needs. Remember our network video from way back when I got to post it somewhere here. You want to find people in your network that can fulfill your immediate needs. That's what it's about. If you don't have those people in your network, start finding the connections you need immediately. Network with industry professionals, collaborate with artists and producers, and attend the industry events and conferences as many as you can. Oh, we need a publisher. Let's, let's find one. We need, a, we need an attorney. Let's find one. We need a lawyer. Let's find one. There's a difference. We need these people. Let's find one. Oh, we need a, a person who's really great at marketing. Let's find one. Oh, we need Casey. Let's call him. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's what you want to focus on what you need right now. Don't focus on what you need in 24 months when we haven't even gotten past month one because we have a lot of things to handle in month one. I know my initial investors are really gung-ho about getting things started, but if you don't take some of these you know, practices or that I'm talking about right now and plan out what you're trying to do, you can fall flat on your face. I'm telling you this because I did it. Now, here's the number one thing that I see a lot of you all invest in. Artists, you can do this all day. But I see investors invest in this and lose so much money in the beginning that they never, the artists never come out. So as a new record label, investing in recording equipment is not a good use of your budget. Since in the beginning, your first goal was to sell music and not become the manufacturing plant. You'll eventually get there. All right. But just start selling the music first. I always tell everybody the goal of the record label is to sell the music. The goal of the manager is to sell the artist. And record labels, you are not a record plant yet you can eventually become one but it makes a lot more sense if you had just a place for this artist to record if they could record on the on their own or with the producers that they're working with without going into the recording studio i know this may compromise just a pinch of quality but some of that quality can come back with a decent mix okay so i would rather you pay for a mix and get a decent recording you know it's not peaking or nothing like that than to go in and spend ten thousand dollars of your budget on recording equipment to be to become the record plant, right? Because this you gotta have you gotta worry about the building, you gotta worry about all types of stuff. Sell the music. We got money to sell music. We ain't got money to buy equipment. All right. Don't start here first. You'll eventually get there, but not in the first round. Now, software. Where do I invest this money, man? Outside of equipment, software. You're going to need software, automation, and AI software to really get your operation going because you don't have a huge staff. It's more than just DistroKid now, all right? You got finances as well as customer management to take care of. So when the fans come in to experience things with, their, with the artists, you want to make sure that the back end is like moving like clockwork. You understand what I'm saying? Everything should be efficient. You should be investing in software and things like that to make your process of getting content, music, and whatnot out easier, cheaper, faster, and affordable to you as an investor. Whatever you use is your choice. You know what I'm saying? There's so many ways you can do things. I've got so many suggestions on this, but it all depends on what your goals were, how you were going to achieve them, what you were going to sign, you know what I'm saying? How much money were you going to make in 18 months? How much were you planning on investing? We can go down this road again, but I'm not. And then you also want to look at signing the artist. You want to sign something that you can put in through your system that's good. Investing in a good artist with a good head on their shoulders will help you go the distance. So investors, I want you to look at it like this. Consider your signing options. 
Any new artists you bring on board have to understand that you have a shoestring budget. $100,000 is a shoestring budget, even though you can do some damage with it. And you have to be able to fund their album production on the shoestring budget. You know what I'm saying? So if you got a problematic artist that doesn't come to the studio sessions on time, is constantly talking about, oh, I need this, I need that. Because remember, with 100K, you really ain't got no money to advance nobody. Or if you got less than 100K, we, we, we talking about crumbs and, and pocket lint. That we making this thing run off of. You got to sign a quality artist so you can at least start with the product. There's one thing I learned in this industry early on was that you got to have the record before you come to the studio. Write that sucker. If that sucker don't sound good without no music or without just a beat and a, and a finger snap, you ain't got no song. See what I'm saying? So we want to sign artists that when they vocally, when they rap or when they sing without music, it's like, oh, what is that? And when we have that, we know that we can have something we can at least work with. And then you want to work on marketing. We're back to marketing again. Marketing and advertising campaigns to promote your artists and record label will be based heavily on social media simply because it gets expensive to run a street campaign or online ads really quickly. So if you got a good artist, you got good software, you didn't dump a bunch of money into equipment, then you can take that money and you can invest it into your marketing materials. Social media content videos and whatnot can be used to market the artist and the music. I know you're not selling the artist, but in the beginning, you kind of got to do a little bit of that to get your music sold because nobody knows about this artist right now. So I would invest more in marketing than equipment. Now, we also got to talk about our cash flow engine, which is the website. Investing in a website and online presence to sell music and merchandise is going to be your greatest investment because it is the major hub of all money involved with the artist's label and the deal you sign with the artist. Whether you want to believe it or not, I'm not talking about no link trees, no Lincoln bios, no stand stores, no gum roads, no nothing. I'm talking about a real website that intakes phone numbers, emails, credit card information, all of this stuff, all the data that you can search engine optimize, optimize and all of that. This is your powerhouse, and this is going to be one of your biggest investments to flow out cash on tickets, merch, more content, exclusive content, Deluxe digital downloads, everything right there on the website. This also brings people to your page for contacts for the A&R of your independent record label, for the manager, for dropping beats off so you can get new producers on board, all this type of stuff, and for people to contact you. That website is the hub. Invest as much to make a pristine, solid, smooth running machine that can generate cash flow for you. This is how you're going to do it right here with this. Now, what if I don't have the right connections? Well, the right connections will come. Just start making noise. And then you have to have use discernment to filter through all these people. You will. You know what I mean? What if I can't afford to invest in my record label? Just start and you'll find a way. If you got a thousand dollars, I know you got a thousand dollars. And with the way inflation is going right now, somebody got a thousand dollars to start. If you got the brain, you watched enough of my videos, you got a few people who know what to do, you know, have some skills, you can build a record label. You can get some money coming in. As long as you got the drive and the heart to do so, you can make it happen. Just start and you'll find a way to afford it. Now, what if my label doesn't stand out in the crowded industry? Go back to the marketing plan and brand identity to make it more unique. It's also going to be based on the artist you sign. But I can tell you this much. The one thing that's going to make your label stand up, not out yet, it will stand out, but stand up is going to be what you place it on. And that's going to be the foundation so that you can cash flow money back to you and secure the rights that you ultimately need. Where is that? That is here. And something I built called the 60 day record label course. It's a framework to establish your record label in a perfect 60 day sequence. So we're going to learn how to set up your LLC and bank account flawlessly to receive the cash flow flawlessly and protect your assets. And we're going to set up your records and publishing division to collect domestic and international publishing royalties without the middleman. Because in the beginning, you need all of it. So keep everything to yourself. And I bet as a record label owner, you don't really know what's in that deal. But we're going to talk about it when you utilize the contract templates to get in the game right away. And we'll break the templates down so with some of the things that I talked about in today's video will begin to make sense. OK, look at all the stuff that's covered. BMI, ASCAP, Sound Exchange, the MLC, Music Reports, Harry Fox Agency, Luminate, All Music, ISRC.com, Music Distributors and more. 275. That's it. Five easy payments of 55 bucks. Can't beat it. All comprehensive course. At the end of the day, I want you to book a call with me because we need to develop a strategy for the foundation we just laid. 
So we got to finish framing out your house or your castle rather. You get what I'm saying? And then I want you to download the free stuff below if this is your first time watching the video. But this is where we ultimately want to be with increased revenue streams, successful artist signing, increased fan base, recognition from industry professionals because you need that as a record label to grow. And you want to have consistent growth in the industry, improved business management skills, and so forth and so on down the line. All of this is going to happen if you do it right, especially if you follow what's in the 60 day record label course and what was in the beginning of today's video, all the way from the beginning, all the way up until where we are right now. But this is probably where you are right now. And this is where you will stay if you don't implement some of these tactics that I talked about. Financial loss, meaning you're going to lose all your 100K. I've seen this more times than I can even count at this point. And the inability to sign successful artists because you didn't ask for help. You didn't ask for nobody to check out the artists before you signed them. You just signed them because you're like, yo, I got the money. I'm the big boss, man. But you don't really know what you're signing. And then you're going to have a failure to establish a fan base because the artist sucks. And nobody wants to hear them. Ultimately, I don't, want to, I don't want you to be here. This is where I want you to be. So to leave from here and go from here is a winning situation. All right. Ultimately, by taking some of these steps to heart, you can transform from a struggling new independent record label owner investor to one who has an increased network to increase their profitability and grow their fan base within the music industry with the artists that they have signed. Music money makers, if you make music, you should always make money. Jump into the 60 day record label, download the 60 day record label book. All right, book a call on musicmoneymakeover.com. Grab the free stuff down below, and I'll see you next time. Peace.